good morning Africa, good morning Nigeria, and good morning to everyone else in the rest of the world. It's a conversation here on TOS Television Network, your digital first for an African network. And guess what? It's a beautiful Thursday morning here in Nigeria's federal capital city, Abuja. And I am Adesu LC. And I am Merciful Ajinamo. Good morning. Good morning, Adesu. Good morning, Merciful. You look dapper as always. Thank you. <laughs> you as well. You as well. All right, before we kick start the show proper, we're going to be bringing you the quote of the day. That was a proverb from Guinea, an African country. And it basically is just saying, you know, tough times don't last forever. So, you know, just keep keeping up. But what's your interpretation of this proverb, though? So I think it's basically an offshoot of what we said yesterday. You mm -hmm. know, you may, have, you may have something doing, you know, taking time to build stuff. You yeah. have dreams. Just stay <laughs> on it. <laughs> stay on it. And at the end of the day, something will happen. So oh, if yeah. you just stay positive and optimistic that things will, will turn out from the bad, to the better. Yeah, darkness don't last forever. This, this is this always life at the end of the time. It does not. It does not. It does not. <laughs> exactly. All right, having said that, we're going to go on a break. And when we come back, we'll be taking you through happenings, you know, and stories from across the African continent. DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest updates on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism where the prism of objectivity and accountability. <laughs> It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget to the budget, they lose. Some of them sleep. They're going to ask, how much do I own? I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am the People's Journalist. DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest updates on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play. Welcome back. Now we'll move straight into development from across Africa, starting from Congo, where 33 people have been killed in the Repub Democratic Republic of Congo's crackdown on rebels. Now, 27 rebels, five civilians and a soldier have died in a two-day military operation against the notorious armed group in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, the army has said on Tuesday. The 27 slain members of the Kudeko militia include one of its major commanders, Malomaki, Lieutenant Jules Ngongo, and the army's spokesman for the Ituri region. Among the civilian population, five people were killed and decapitated by Kodeko, while one soldier died in a fighting and a second was wounded, he said. Kodeko is the Cooperation for the Development of Congo, and it's an armed political religious sect that has been linked to more than 1,000 deaths since December 2017. Experts say it comprises various militia groups claiming to defend ethnic lenders in Ituri, a gold-rich province bordering Uganda and South Sudan. All right, we'll move on to Somalia, where Somalia's Jubaland State President Ahmed Madobe has sacked fugitive Interior Minister Abdi Rashid Jannan. 
Jinan, who has been on the run since March last year, is expected to surrender to the Somali federal government. He had been hiding in Mandera, northern Kenya, after escaping from custody in Mogadishu in December 2019. His surrender comes as a relief for Mandera residents who have in the recent past said Mr. Janan is a security threat to them. He crossed into Mandera in December 2019 after escaping from a Mogadishu jail where he faced criminal charges. The section of security officers that had crossed into Mandera with him clashed with the Somali National Army in March 2020, a fight that affected Mandera town. A year later, the federal government of Somalia sent in more military officers and another fight broke out. It was during the January clash that Janan lost majority of his soldiers to the army. Mm. Quite sad news right there. And another you know, sad news from Ethiopia, uh, where Wright's body says Eritrean soldiers killed over 100 people in Tigray. The documents released on Wednesday morning report an incident when armed Eritrean troops went from house to house asking for men and boys from villages. They then shot them. The document, Investigation into Grave Human Rights Violation in Aksum City, is only a preliminary finding, but it came a day after Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed admitted for the first time of the presence of Eritrean troops on Ethiopian soil. The report confirmed that on two days, November 28 and November 29, 2020, grave violations of human rights were committed and that in Aksum, more than 100 civilians, including tourists on a pilgrimage who were attending to mark the annual Aksum Sion celebration and IDPs living in the area. As the residents, families of victims and eyewitnesses described to EHRC, civilians were killed in front of their children, spouses and mothers. That's very, very, very disheartening. Sad, yeah. And Aksum City in Ethiopia is the holiest city in Ethiopia. That's where you have, um, I think, the church, first church or something like that. Very holy. So you have pilgrims go there year in, year out to celebrate, you know, um, one of the, at the Axum Festival and all of that. And having to see that that happened, you know, while people were there on pilgrimage and people were killed in front of their loved ones, it has to be most, one of the most disheartening. You know, I'm looking forward there. to a time where people would have, like, majority of people in the world, in Africa especially, would have value for human Exactly. Because I just don't, going around killing, it, I, I don't know what motivates people it doesn't, to do it. It doesn't even have to matter what you're fighting for, right? It doesn't matter what you're, what like the liberation of your country, liberation of, this is human lives. And civilians, innocent people innocent that haven't people. done anything to you are the ones, you know, that have to, you know, victims or casualties of this rift and this war. It's quite sad and I hope we don't get to hear that as often as we were hearing it now. Yes. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement is a golden opportunity to, um, for economies on the continent to transform their supply chains and reverse the economic degeneration caused by the pandemic. This was the message of the Adebayo Adedeji Memorial Lecture held on the sidelines of a meeting of African finance ministers in Ethiopia on Monday. Hailed as the prophet of regional integration, Adedeji's legacy holds important lessons for the continent's industrial revolution and re-emergence from the ashes of COVID-19, says Davis. The pipe-smoking Nigerian economist and public servant, Adedeji, diagnosed the continent's key vulnerability as its underdevelopment, springing from a weak productive base that relies on subsistence and producing raw exported goods. He says Africa has to break the apron springs, strings of structural and relational dependence on producing a limited number of cheap primary commodities for export, said Davis, quoting Adelaide's landmark treaties, the African Alternative Framework to Structural Adjustment Programs for Social Economic Recovery and Transformation, written in 1990. Well, I think basically it's just saying, I think it was well, in line with what our guest said yesterday, we have to look inward towards, mm -hmm. you know, producing more than we consume and then not just producing, but also look at producing enough to be, you know, exported to other countries and then so we can diversify the economies of Africa. So this is not just saying, okay, Nigeria has to look towards being a producing state. It's saying Africa as a continent has to look towards that. And according so, to the statement, like quality goods, yeah, yes, quality exactly. Not, not quality just, products that yes, we can export not just and know that, yes. Basic and cheap mm -hmm. produce, but stuff that can fetch, you know, large income for, for the, the economy and maybe attract investments and all of that. And so Africa can look to be, you know, 
some get some sort achieve some sort of development and growth instead of you know where we have it now especially looking towards you know post um the post pandemic era that's after covid because mm -hmm. we do know that right. covid has clamped down it's on a lot of yeah, things right true. and so every every economy even even the western western economies are looking towards economic recovery from covid19 and all yeah. of that stuff yeah and then so we also have to look as a continent we also have to look at that we also look at, i have to look at it from a perspective of we have to do more mm -hmm. for the country and you know to you know achieve that level of growth and development for africa mm. all right having said that you know talking about africa we're going to go on a break and that will be to bring you covid 19 update from across africa Welcome back. That was COVID-19 update from across Africa. Now, moving straight into, you know, the newspaper headlines for this morning. And we're going to be starting, you know, from the Blueprint newspaper. Very colorful headlines here on the Blueprint newspaper, starting from the very top. And this one says, 1.5 billion naira for Port Harcourt refinery. Reps order probe of repair funds. And then underneath that, we have um, PDP backs investigation urges transparency. And that story is on page six. Another story on page six on the Blueprint newspaper is troops kill two bandits in Chikun and others ex escape. Beside that, Southwest leads as Nigeria's domestic debt um, hits 4.1 trillion naira. And then underneath that, equity market closes higher, gains 199 billion naira. And moving straight to the very obvious headline on the Blueprint newspaper there. Federal government earmarks 1 trillion naira for cottage industries in 774 local governments, yeah, that's in Nigeria. And then the two riders under that, the first rider says private sector to invest 19 trillion naira over 10 years. And then NULGE rejects bill asking to delist local council as third tier of government. And then underneath uh, the picture of the day, Buhari Tinubu Rift handiwork of mischief makers that's coming from the presidency and then the writer under that ashiwaju remains one of nigeria's most respected leaders that's coming from um, garba shehu and then the, another you know headline on the blueprint newspaper on corruption nigeria's rating by ti that's transparency international full of discrepancies that's coming from the federal government that's on page seven beside that nigeria loses over 455 billion naira yearly to poor sanitation that's coming from the Senate. Modular floating dock on course. Nimasa NPA ashore. And then the last headline on the, on the Blueprint newspaper. Jigawa retires. Get 1.4 billion Naira benefits. All of these stories you can find on the Blueprint newspaper. And we move over to the National Economy newspaper. We begin from the very top as well. Um, Nimasa said to deploy floating dock worth 50 billion Naira. That can be found on the um, National Economy newspaper, and the story continues on page four of the National Economy. We move over to the very gaping headline there. We can see our Frexim Bank, Nexim, to mobilize 20.5 billion naira for Nigeria's export manufacturing for other sectors. And that can be found in National Economy, the big story there. On the the picture of the day, uh, Dango to fertilizer plant to commence operations next week. Can be found on page five. And side by side, this is the last headline for today is mobile money account now worth $1.2 billion. Hmm. That can be found on page five of the national economy. Hmm, quite interesting. Moving over from the national economy to the Daily Trust newspaper, starting from you know the top left. No rift between Buhari Tinubu, uh, that's coming from the presidency. And then beside that, Nigeria failing or falling apart under Buhari's watch. Um, that's coming from Northern Elders. And beside that, when Southern Senators back United Nigeria as fireworks over Oduduwa Republic rage. And then the very, you know, the big story there on the Daily Trust newspaper. Senate moves to whittle down IGP's powers, decentralizes police structure. 
Once operational budgetary controls vested in AIJs, that's Assistant Inspector General of Police, and then governors, lawmakers, monarchs to be in advisory council. And um, the picture of the day right there is in you know, the zonal structure of the Nigeria Police Force. And then underneath that picture of the day, bandits kill over 20 vigilantes in Niger. And under that, soldiers kill 11 gunmen in Abia State, bright beaten to death, set ablaze in Niger. That's very gory. And then beside that, uh, being the last headline on the Daily Trust newspaper, Tinubu in Katsina donates 50 million naira to market fire victims. These stories are on the Daily Trust newspaper. Do get yourself a copy to you know, be fully abreast with everything that has been read out here today. All right, we'll move over to the Daily Times newspaper. I'll begin from the very top as well, where journalists challenged on practical evaluation of governance. And the writer on this says, as three-day media training ends, in Delta State that can be found on the Daily Times newspaper and then to the very gaping headline there says federal government opens bids for 12 federal highways that can be found on page 2 of the Daily Times and then under the picture of the day the first one will begin with refinery where reps to investigate audit 1.5 billion dollars for Port Harcourt refinery rehabilitation previous maintenance the story can be found on page 3 and then shareholders United Capital shareholders to get 4.2 billion naira dividend payout can be found on page 22 of the national the daily times and the last headline of this um, newspaper is presidency denies rift between buhari tinubu as ex-governor donates 50 million naira to katina fire victims presidency denies rift between buhari tinubu as ex-governor donates 50 million naira to katina fire victims that can be found on page six of the daily times all right, moving over to the leadership newspaper, the last um, newspaper we're going to be, you know, looking at this morning. And the first one is on the Africa continental free trade area. Federal government to support state in boosting IGR, and that's the internally, you know, internally generated revenue. And then underneath that, Nimasa to deploy 50 billion naira floating dockyard. That story is on page 36, and the first one is on page 7 of the Leadership Newspaper. Moving over to the very gaping headline on the Leadership Newspaper, and it's on the issue of insecurity. No need to worry. We'll have elections in 2023. INEC says military will surmount challenges. Um, that's on page 4 of the Leadership Newspaper. And beside it, tuberculosis kills 162,000 Nigerians annually. That's coming from the NTS. And the writer under that says, we'll end scorch by 2030. And that's coming from governors uh, in Nigeria. And then underneath the picture of the day, Colombia seeks closer ties with Nigeria as W. Erewa partners leadership. And under that, NIN compulsory for UTME registration that's coming from JAM, the Joint Admission, Admission and Matriculation Board. And then beside that one, reps to ad, audit refineries and maintenance funds. 107 retired New Nigerian newspaper, workers died waiting for entitlement. Um, that's coming from a union, part of the labor union. And then PDP, NEC meets July over zoning of party offices. That's the last headline on the leadership newspaper this morning. And you know you have to be fully abreast with everything that's happening in the country, whether you're Nigeria living in Nigeria or you're Nigeria living in diaspora. You have to know what's happening in your country, right? And that's why you should get yourself a copy of all of these newspapers that were read out to you. All these stories inside, interesting stories that you should look at. And if you cannot get yourself, you know, a hard copy, get yourself an a copy, you know, of the papers. Or you can just visit our website, www.tostvnetwork.com, you know, to catch up on all of these stories. That's too much we can take on you know the newspaper headline segment of the conversation we'll be going on a quick break and when we get back i'll be taking you through what's trending on social media
Welcome back. It's still the conversation on TOS Television Network. And you know that you should be a part of the conversation. Just join the community. Follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. That's TOS TV Network, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. You should subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can catch up on amazing programs that we have lined up for you. And also check out our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. Now, moving back into my favorite segment of the conversation that's what's trending on social media and guess what has been trending tinubu yes tinubu has been trending on social media in the last 24 hours and then if you if you were here or if you watched us through you know this uh, newspaper headline segment you but you would have heard us mention that tinubu donated 50 million naira you know to victims of you know the katsina um, central market fire they say market engulfed you know the central market in katsina state and then there had been donations and tinubu was one of those uh, people persons that donated 50 million naira you know to you know the market and that has been trending Carson is still quite a stare on social media actually and i'm going to take a few tweets to that regard the first one is from reno Omokri, and he says bola at ashiwaji tunubu who didn't visit or donate one kobo to victims of the Sasha market crisis or to victims of the Jesha market fire in Lagos has today donated 50 million naira to victims of the Katsina market fire. Obviously, Tinubu's charity does not begin at home. Astan, table shaker. And then this one is from Uche P. Okoye and it says, Wiki donated 500 million naira to Sokoto. Tinubu donated 500 million, I think he was, but he, he meant to say 50 million naira to Katsina. The struggle to big ass is real. I will never be part of this nonsense. And then this one is from at FS underscore Yusuf underscore. I like Tinubu because he's working hard to fail. And then this one um, is from Bashir Ahmed. Uh, that's a presidential spokesperson. And it says to President Muhammad Dubari, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu remains one of the most respected political leaders in the country who has stuck to his principles in the face of all adversities. And then Tajuddin 2013 is saying, why is Tinubu's name giving you headaches? Where were you during the struggle for democracy under the military in 16 years as an opposition under a people disaster party? Nigeria political landscape is big enough for every politician to, you know, actualize their dreams. And then, you know, presidential aide Gar Bashir and Bashir Ahmed, you know, they also took to Twitter yesterday, to, you know, to clarify uh, the, if there's a rift between you know, the presidency and Bola Ahmed, you know, because across the all social media platform, we, um, across that newspaper headlines, this when we had seen where they yes. said there's, yeah. no, rift there's no rift between the presidency, presidency and the presidency. So they took to Twitter, you know, to clarify that. While Bashir Ahmed, Ahmed says to President Muhammad Ibrahim, Ashwaji Bola Sinibu remains one of the most respected political leaders in the country who has stuck to his principle in the face of all adversities. Gary Bashir, who says the presidency wishes to make it clear that there is no rift between President Muhammad Buhari and his strong ally, Ashiwaju Bala Ahmed Tinubu. Um, so, no, personally, okay, before I, before I come, before I, you know, give my opinion, what do you think about, you know, this development? Not necessarily saying there's a rift between the presidency and then, you know, Bala Ahmed Tinubu. But, you know, the fact that Nigerians have a problem with him donating that a, a sum of money to, you know, market fire that happened in Katina State, but the, you know, there was a market fire that happened in Lagos State and then I think somewhere um, in, in, in somewhere in, also in the southwest in Nigeria and they said he did nothing, but when it came to Katina State, he had to do something. What do you think about you that? You see, before now, there, there have been so much controversy surrounding, you know, President Muhammad Buhari administration and the ex-governor of Lagos State, mm -hmm. Bola Tinubu, you know. Yeah. Before now, even before this, you know, Katina thing, people have, there have been speculation on the internet, even on Twitter, we see people talking about, is he coming off presidency in yeah. 2023? Yeah. Is this going to be, you know, they've been together. You know how politics in Nigeria is quite, you know, yes, very, obviously. very dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And people always have things to say. It's so every, everything that's happened before now, it already began from a place where people started having speculations mm -hmm. that, oh, he was coming for presidency, who do we support? Mm -hmm. Is this President Muhammad Buhari? What has been happening before? We have supporters mm -hmm. from different angles. And now he's coming to donate. So the people who were of the opinion that is there any need for him coming back for presidency are saying, look, this is not going to get you anywhere. anywhere yeah. And, you know, the papers have always said there's no rift. Yeah, we, still, we keep seeing, I do not know where Nigerians keep getting their in information, information from. from. We, we keep seeing people saying, look, 
this is not going to work. We know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We know what you're doing. This money you're spending, whatever good you think you're doing, is all part of a manifesto. Yes, exactly. So that's what has generated all of this. And I, I'm not surprised. We always have things to say. Nigerians are always there. Any development, anything, any problem, we always have things to say. I like, so how, I like how Nigerians always have an opinion about everything. Mm -hmm. And they really don't care. They just, you know, they say not. it the way they, they feel it is. And, and uh, you know, there's this saying that there's no smoke without fire. Of so course. For, for Nigerians to have come out to say, look, this is what it is. There must be something, you know, something happening. About, of course, on, on of the course, ground that's happening that we might not know about. Public speculations and all of that stuff. So I'm just, you know, looking f how, how all of these plays out. And I know it's all of this is prior to the 2023 general election. It always happens. It always like happens, when elections yeah. are approaching, we always have we have these different drama, talks, the, comments, yes, side comments, exactly. what's happening, Things what's happening, not. Reactions to them. This politician doing this, and then people talking about it. So there's always a drama, you know, that precedes, you know any general election mm -hmm. in the country. So I'm not surprised that this is coming out. No and I'm not surprised that, you know, the president is coming out to address it and saying, look, I don't have a problem with this person. I mean, it's politics. It's not a do it. It's not supposed to be a do or, do or die affair. It's not a do or die affair. So if he's, if he's doing anything, and I think Nigerians are saying this because um, Katsina is where, you know, the president of Nigeria is mm, from. The That's from, where yeah. he's from. And then he are saying, look, something happened in your state mm -hmm. when you were the former governor, you did nothing about it. And then it happened in you know where the presidency is from, and you were quick to donate. You know this certain amount and of someone money. Someone says charity does not begin. And then he said, oh, exactly, I was going to say, charity <laughs> does not actually, you know, for him begin at home. It's quite hilarious, right? Very, but, but yeah. I just hope this pans out like really and, well. And, and, and the good thing is, whatever happens in the end, we've seen all all the options. Yeah, exactly. we have people who are giving us different sides of the story, mm -hmm. different opinions. So we are not shocked mm -hmm. in the event that anything happens. If it comes out, it does not come out. Anything that happens, come We're ready. Yes, we are ready. Yeah, We're because so, social media is always there to give us information. I mean, the trend table is always there. We're going to always monitor the trend table, you know, to see what's stopping the trend right. in the chat. And then, obviously, I'm going to be bringing it to you. Or, you know, what's trending? Hot, hot. Just hot. I like the way he puts it. <laughs> I'm going to be bringing to you on this segment of the conversation. That's the what you can take on, you know, what's trending segment of the conversation. We're going to go on a break. And you know that this break is the most important break of all. Because it's in that time, we're going to be bringing you the big story. North to South Africa. East to West Africa. POS TV Network is your digital first Pan African news network, bringing you news from across the continent. Visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com and follow us on social media at TOSTV Network on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Watch us on television, channel 138 on TSTV Africa. You're welcome back to the conversation showing on your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television. And it's that time where we'll bring you the main crux of the conversation program, which is the big story. And you know we're still commemorating International Women's Month, where we get to celebrate women and everything they've done and everything that we are going to do, you know, to make the women's, you know, uh, uh, industry move forward. I like to say <laughs> industry. industry because, yeah, it's always a fight. Yeah, we're fighting with something, equality and everything. Yeah. So today, um, we, we, we talk about the inclusivity of um, women in governance. And Nigeria, as a member of the United Nations, signed a no ratified the various relevant international instrument treaties and conventions without reservation. And these instruments have always emphasized that member nations put in place all the necessary mechanisms needed to eliminate gender discrimination, ensure equality and human dignity 
to all men and women. Available statistics reveal that out of the 109 senators in the National Assembly, only nine are women, while only 27 out of the 360 members of the House of Representatives are women. The picture clearly depicts a lopsided membership of the House in favor of the men, and women are still underrepresented and obviously marginalized. This is regardless of the fact that a national gender policy has been formulated to promote a 35% affirmative action for women, a policy that demands 35% involvement of women in all governance processes. On the show today, we will speak with Buki Shonibari via the phone. Now, B Buki Shonibari is the executive director of Invictus Africa. She's a consultant and human rights advocate focused on promoting the rights of vulnerable and disadvantaged persons. Buki, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Good yes. morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Um, first of all, what is the situation with the national agenda policy in terms of implementation in Nigeria? Um, the, the challenge with the national gender policy is that, you know, it's one thing for us to have policies, mm -hmm. thing for these policies to be implemented. You know, it's the same challenge that we have with our laws um, where we document intentions and, you know, the way we expect that things should be. But when we now come to implementation, then there is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So if we look at national gender policy, we see that there, there are a lot of noble things there that if followed as they as it is, then the issue of gender inequality, will, 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 we won't be even be talking about it today. Hmm. The implementation has always been the challenge. Implementation, especially coming from the grassroots community, do women know, for instance, do women know that this gender policy exists? Do they know what it entails? Even those that are supposed to be um, implementing it, do they know the content of this policy? Mm -hmm. So the same thing with our laws, that's the same thing, the same challenge we have with our policy, where implementation has almost, almost been zero. Okay, so um, having said all of that, so how do we begin to you know, tackle the barriers facing women in politics and governance in Nigeria? Thank you. Um, so I, I think that uh, when we talk about the barriers that, that women face, it is not just about um, the fact that we have a percentage that shows that women are not um, really participating in leadership. We look at Nigeria's political structure. Um, we see a lot of um, challenges that are embedded there. Um, currently, Nigeria, uh, almost 50% of the Nigerian population are actually women. Okay. So that would tell you, or one would expect that with that population, we should have, you know, that certain percentage, mm -hmm. at least 50% of women representing us, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that's, not the, the, that's not the situation. Um, as much as we have been pushing for the 35% affirmative action, um, coming now directly to the question you asked in terms of, of, of um, solutions, yes. I think we must first of all dig into what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. The challenges is not so much about the fact that we don't, people would say that we don't have many women that are skilled or qualified. Yeah. But we must beyond um, participation of women in policy. We must look into issues around unfavorable political structures mm. that we have in Nigeria that is characterized by high cost of political participation. How many women can actually afford even the party nomination um, 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 form? The lack of internal party democracy, you know, all this political exclusion, even marginalization of vulnerable groups. We know that it's not just the fact that we are women but some intersectional oppressions also, like women living with disabilities. Hmm. Even Godfather and Godmotherism, you know that is a big issue in Nigeria's political structure. Yes. But beyond the political structure itself, we must also look at how there are so many practices, so many practices that we have to keep in our particular The issue of finances, the issue of um, the um, political discrimination, to participate in politics, you would have to consider what part of Nigeria you from, what religion do you practice. Mm. Even wrong perception of women in, in politics, mm. lack of support a lot of times, mm. media misrepresentation. Thank God for 
um, organizations like TOS TV that mm. continues to put women in good light. But if you look at some other media houses, especially during political era, you would see how women are represented as oh, a wife that is not, you know, doing well at home that now wants to work into politics. So anyway, one thing all of these challenges is we must actually look at this problem. The key solution that I would propose would be for us to learn <clears throat> to learn from what Namibia is doing. Yes. Namibia has a, a policy that is called the Zebra policy. But that policy is actually from the party structure itself, from the party constitution, where constitutionally they um, insist that there should be 50% of women representation. Hmm. But in all leadership structures that they have in that country. And it is a lesson that we, 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 we've had meetings with some representatives of Namibia and they've had to come and talk about this their zebra policy. Mm. So, we know that they don't have 35% affirmative um, action in Nigeria's constitution. So it does not give it that level of, um, of legal. Um, um, and primacy that it could have. Mm. But if political parties would lead to, to what they have said in their political constitutions, mm. their political party constitutions and manifestos, to say we would have 35% of women representation or 50%, if they begin to lead to, to it, by the time members of these political parties get into leadership position, we will continue to see implementation of what started off from home, yeah. from their political parties. So it is not when they get into leadership that they will start talking about the fact that they want more women in, in political um, representation. That's just one. But there's so much more. But if we can get it right from the political system, mm. then we may begin to solve um, this issue of underrepresentation of women in politics. All right. Let's talk about um, the 2023 elections that are just by the corner. I mean, two years um, already, like, we, we have just two years two to years go. Two years to go, yes. So, um, in terms of um, what we have been doing, you know, with the fight for, for women, inclusivity in politics have started before now. Mm -hmm. Do you see any sort of success in 2023 general elections? Do you see women, you know, more coming to stand inclusion. and more women, you know, being participating, participating in the voting process yes. to vote for women? Do you see any rate of success? The, the fact that women participate in political um, process has not been an issue in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Statistics have always shown that women always participate. Yes. Whether from voting or from even registering, figures always show. Mm. Where the problem is has been that we get that issue of representation. Okay. Mm. My concern coming down to your to your question is that just like the United States, 2023 is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. The statistics today, in terms of female representation in, in all strata of political leadership, is actually a downfall from where we were coming from. Yes. Before we had higher percentage of women, um, both at the federal house of assembly, that is, um, um, is um, both at state houses of assembly and even federal houses of assembly. But we've seen how these figures have actually really notized. So, for instance, in 2011, we had seven female legislators. That is at the State House of Assembly level. In 2015, we had 46 female legislators. In 2019, we had 44. We keep going down. That shows you a movement from a 5.7% female representation to now a 4.3% percent female representation. Mm -hmm. That is at the same level. Mm -hmm. At the federal level, we see the same thing. How, you know, we, the, the, the figures continue to go down. Even in appointed positions, we see how the figures continue to go down. So it tells you that we really need to pay attention to, to, to certain things. Okay. Um, first, we need to pay attention to this statistic. Uh -huh. We need to pay attention to the drivers and enablers. What are the factors as much as we're doing a lot of gender equality issues, we're raising awareness. People are talking about female representation in liberty positions, and things are so bad that even when one governor appoints a woman, we would celebrate something that happened. That should not be the case. It should be the norm. 
So I think we really need to look into what factors are actually contributing to this issue of we having the most a reduced system of women actually being represented in, in political parties. Mm. Uh, one thing that I know came out strongly from the last um, election today is the fact that the cost of politics is getting higher and higher in Nigeria, so mm. much so that political um, appointment and sorry, political leadership goes to the highest bidder. Okay. And we know that our social cultural system has not been favorable enough for women, such that women can get of that kind of, of, of money. I show a story with the book that um, um, love does not win election. That was a that was a on the field kind of experience of what women actually face. So the road to 2023, as much as we, we started having this conversation, mm. I don't think I'm seeing enough personally as bookkeeper. I don't think I'm seeing enough kind of movement from the structural issues that we women's participation in the leadership position. Mm. I'm not seeing this because those structural issues are the things that need to be dealt with for us to begin to see the fruit, the manifestation of non women in the political. So long as we have all of these social cultural issues, the political system that is characterized by high cost of, of maintenance, high cost of uh, political political exclusion, all of these things. So long as we have those structural issues, we are not going to have a different result. Okay. And you know that not keep doing the same thing and expect. So if we don't deal with those root causes, then we continue to have this conversation. Okay, so Sadly, talking about social cultural issues, you did speak about you know the constant reduction of you know women in in governance and leadership position in Nigeria. And I've had this conversation before with somebody, and then two persons actually, and one was of the opinion that the reason we have that reduction in number is women. Nigerian women are not so interested, you know, in politics and, you know, taking up leadership position. And another person has, you know, argued that the issue is actually, you know, women don't, uh, women are actually trusted, you know, with this position. They don't trust women to do so much in, you know, in positions like this. What is your take on that? that that's not a true assumption um, or a true okay. um, um, the, the The assumption that um, women are not interested in politics, mm. or the assumption that women don't support women. Mm. See, it, it, we will say that you cannot place something on nothing and expect it to stand. Mm. What is the system? Is the system designed for women to excel? Mm. Let's construct the system. Let's break it down. Let's look at that structure, that political structure in Nigeria. Is it designed in such a way that allows women to actually Coming, let's even start with coming in, okay. and then when they come into the structure that allows them to actually thrive within the political system, and then thriving within the political system that also allows them to actually thrive outside of it. So, so, if we look at all of these factors, it is not an issue of women being interested, mm. women have always been interested in politics, but when they begin to get even get close to the door of politics, you begin to see issues being thrown at women. Oh, you are too short. Oh, you are divorced. Oh, um, um, you didn't go to school. Oh, your certificate was this. And then they begin to throw all of these impediments that restrict women from actually getting in. Now, women who are able to break it through to actually get in now begin to face internal political issues, internal political structures that they are not, that become you know, so difficult for them to actually maneuver. Issues around corruption, issues around impunity, and all of these issues that I've mentioned before that I don't need to overflow. Mm -hmm. And then, when you get into it, not being able to even go through the ranks within the political structure. So this is not a case of women not being interested. And we must also debunk this idea of women not supporting women. Women support women. I am a product of women, a woman supporting me. And there are so many women who are in leadership positions today who have been supported and backed by other women. Mm -hmm. All of these and notions are usually just being through. So as we focus on the things that don't matter, mm. let's focus on the things that matter. So right. Political structure, the system that does not allow women to thrive. Okay. Let's, let, um, sorry, let's, let's draw an inference from, um, you know, elections that have happened in the past and, you know, talking about women who are, you know, 
taking up leadership positions. You know, we, we, we speak about the woman who became president in one of the African countries uh, yes. recently. And, and we, had, we had a large number of people, you know, celebrating our across social media and the internet and everything. Now, let's talk about mm. the last elections that have happened. We've had women who, against all odds, have, you know, found their place in a party and have, you know, mm -hmm. re registered their presence to be voted for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you spoke about th that um, women sporting women is not really an issue, but if you talk about the number of women who, you know, when, when they drew up statistics, who supported those women, yeah. in fact, we even had one that, you know, it was not up to a hundred. A yes. woman was, you know, so what, is there a sensitization that has to go on? Or do, do you feel there's a loophole in um, that phrase, women supporting women? I, I agree completely that there is a gap there is a lacuna that we really need to fill in terms of women supporting women, mm. you know. Um, and even when we talk about some of these social cultural norms, by the time you get into grassroots communities, people will say that it is women that are actually um, implementing them or perpetrating them, you know, and, and all that. But see, I, 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 I wouldn't want us to, to um, 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 give light to that notion that okay. women do support women. Women do support women. I agree also that we need to do a lot of sensitization. But when we say sensitization, what should the sensitization be? Are we saying that we want to go into communities and be telling women, support women, support women, support women? Yes, that is a good idea. But let me say that if you have a political structure where it is the other that always takes the day. It means that this IS leader, let's break it down to how it plays out in Nigeria. This IS leader has a lot of money. This IS leader is able to go into market and into communities where there are more women. Hmm. This IS leader is able to spend money to love women, innocent women, naive women, uneducated women who are trying to survive and make a living. This IS leader has the money to buy them over. Hmm. This guy doesn't have the money to do huge TV um, 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 advertisement. This guy doesn't have the money to, to, to do so much more than this woman can do. So much so that even the season in Nigeria now, at the point of, of the the best 5,000 naira and then you pay. And then they are working over the back to be sure that that 5,000 naira that has been given to you is actually being used for what it has been given to you. How many Thank you so much for joining the show this morning. We're actually out of time. I would have liked, I actually have so much to ask you, but we're out of time. Mm. Thank you so much for joining the show, Vicky. Thank you so much for having me, and well done to TOS TV. Thank, Thank you, thank you, you very, very much. much. Um, and that's the much you can take on the conversation this morning. But don't forget to be a part of the conversation. You can also be a part of the community. Follow TOS TV Network across all social media platforms. TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and as well as YouTube, because we have an amazing lineup of programs that you should check out on our YouTube channel. And also follow, you know, check out our website, www.tlwestivnetwork.com. I am Adesu Walsi. And I am Masterful Ajinomo. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.